the subsequent content. Hope everyone is well. This is Sam Kepler. I'm with the OptumRx product and strategy team, and I'm blessed to connect with you today to discuss pre-check my script. And we'll dig into a, a few things today in the subsequent content around you know, what pre-check my script is, who are we actively partnering with, what does this capability kind of look and feel like in the eyes of, of the clinical team that's using it? And what value has this tool delivered in the marketplace to date? So with that said, we will we'll dive right in. At the 50,000 foot level, Precheck My Script is a capability that is built with the objective of empowering providers and by extension, their patients with real time patient-specific cost and coverage details to essentially help inform decisions at the point of care, or maybe said a little bit differently, but to avoid surprises at the pharmacy counter. And surprises that you know, I'm sure you or somebody you know have experienced, like you know, how, how much is this medication gonna cost? Or maybe there's some sticker shock. Uh, is this medication covered? Uh, can I pick it up today? And if there's a prior authorization associated with it, uh, or are there any you know, lower cost alternatives that are covered on my benefit design on my formulary that could save me some money, right? Those types of, of surprises that can lead to, you know, a pretty abrasive experience. One of the best parts about PreCheck My Script is that it is fully embedded within the physician's EMR or their electronic medical record, and even more specifically embedded within the e-prescribing workflow. And you can see a quick snapshot here of what one of our EMR partners' uh, user interfaces look like. They're all a little bit different, but the core competencies around cost, coverage, uh, the lower cost alternatives, clinical or so are all going to be consistent. I'll also mention that more broadly, when you think about the pricing and transparency strategy, the same capability that's fueling PreCheck My Script on the back end is also fueling uh, other capabilities like My Script Finder that consumers have access to and like uh, Navigator that the customer service, service advocates on the front line are using. So net-net, if you're this, you know, the same patient, using all of those different modalities for the same prescription, you're going to see consistent details communicated throughout all of those different touch points. Here's another kind of click down into what some of the preferred alternative medications and what that user interface looks and feels like. You know, we have an opportunity to provide uh, on formulary specific alternatives. It, it, it is not a one size fits all, um, you know, sort of formulary across the 50 plus million lives that this, this capability is available for. Uh, and today we have the opportunity to display as many as five alternatives. Um, however, in, in a number of cases, we don't need to display any. If a provider is you know, selecting a tier one you know, preferred medication, especially a generic, you know, that's a great decision, that's great behavior. We don't necessarily need to cloud the system with information that may not necessarily be that actionable. So really when you get into higher tiered prescriptions, uh, branded medications in particular, usually there's going to be uh, maybe one, if not multiple alternatives that you can see in, in this example that I think is actually affiliated with, uh, you know, with Enbrel. Even though we, we may not always provide a kind of on formulary specific alternative, there is logic that continues to become more robust uh, around alternative pharmacies uh, that could be filled at, that may be local, they may be you know, related to home delivery, uh, just to continue to educate the care team and certainly the, the patients on you know, what all their options are uh, in an effort to uh, maybe fill a prescription based on convenience, based on price, or based on other factors that are important to them. I mentioned a minute ago that we, you know, that this experience is fully embedded within the physician's EMR, and we've been blessed through the years to partner with a number of different EMRs that you can see on the right-hand side of this slide. Uh, certainly your Epic and your Cerner's are gonna be the frequent flyers uh, that we're commonly asked about, um, although there's obviously a number of others that are on the page, I would stress that this is not the comprehensive list of our EMR and of our integrator partners. It, it, it continues to grow and it continues to expand. And actually, as of uh, tomorrow, which would be uh, June 26th, 
we're going to be going live with almost another 20 EMR partners that are uh, smaller, uh, maybe more, more local in some specific markets. So, you know, I think the quick takeaway is that this list continues to change. It's a, it's a constantly growing list in a good way as we continue to scale the network and ensure that providers have access and are using it in a, in a meaningful way. A couple of more kind of screens that really illustrate, you know, how does this look and feel for the care team? And I would, again, kind of do a quick public service announcement, as I mentioned a, a few slides ago, that this may look and feel a little bit different depending on the EMR and the user interface and the workflow that they're, they're leveraging. You know, we do not own the user interface. We do not own the workflow. Right? That is entirely kind of owned and, and proprietary to the EMR. Now, we very much try and influence it based on what we believe the best practices are with the performance that we see. Um, you know, but it, it is, uh, you know, it, it's their expertise and certainly they have their own secret sauce. Now, but here's a quick example of a, a medication that's payable. And a lot of our EMR partners have, you know, iconography or different color schemes that they use. You can see a really prominent example here where you've got a payable claim and, and that's affiliated with, you know, kind of a warm and accepting green box. So you can quickly see the coverage details. You know, below that, you can see the patient cost share. And it, this is down to the penny, the exact patient cost share that that patient would pay if they fill that medication at that prescription. It's not a guess. It's not based on big data. It's not something that we're inferring. You know, it is, you know, in essence, a copy-paste from the, the trial claim that we are adjudicating within the RX claim platform. And certainly, as, as you can see on the bottom, there are some lower cost alternatives that are available that may save that patient money. And, and we find on average that when one of those lower cost alternatives is selected, that that's driving savings for the patient and by extension, the plan. You know, the patient on average is saving about $225, you know, per switch to some of those lower cost alternatives. So there's a, certainly a meaningful opportunity to influence affordability uh, and cost. Another quick example of the medication that you know, may not be covered as part of the, the benefit design, you can see that green box shift to yellow just so it's a, a little bit more alarming and prominent and, and uh, you know, kind of as discussed a little bit earlier, there's some alternatives that are covered under the formula and you can see the, the patient cost share associated with that. I will note since you do see NA, you know, planned cost share is something that we are continuing to integrate within uh, this capability across a lot of our different partnerships, you know, kind of spawned by uh, members that are in hospice, um, you know, where they're obviously not responsible for paying the full cost of the prescription, the plan is, um, but it, it will continue to expand from there. So physicians, especially if their patient is in a higher deductible plan where they're shouldering the full cost of the medication, uh, they can understand um, you know, what is, you know, what's the cost of you know, that prescription for that patient versus somebody, you know, that may be in a, a copay or a co-insurance type of a phase where you kind of have a split cost share between the plan and the patient. We've got one other example here, you know, with Lyrica. Uh, again, you can see the cost coverage and, and messaging details uh, with a, a couple of alternatives that are, are available below. Uh, we do have some logic that is infused within this capability that will automatically swap uh, brands for uh, generics if a dispense as written isn't something that is selected during the e-prescribing process. So I think when you think about kind of those automatic substitutions in addition to the substitutions that, you know, may take place like the example that we were looking at before, uh, you know, we probably see switch rates in excess of uh, about 40, 45 percent. So pretty, pretty meaningful uh, changes both automatically and then also with the individuals that are using the, the tool. I think one of the, the last thing that I'll, I'll mention here is, you know, really what is this tool demonstrated in the market to date? And there's a lot of metrics that are on this page. You know, I think the typical cliche is, you know, we see a number of win-wins across the, the healthcare system that essentially ties back to, you know, improving the, the quadruple aim. You know, I already talked about the patient or the member savings and kind of by extension the, the plan savings, 
Uh, I think an important part in this is also, you know, how are the physicians and how are the pharmacists and the other care team members benefiting? And, and we had uh, a number of uh, kind of analyses that were conducted externally in partnership with Price Waterhouse Coopers, and, and you know, we're in a position to quantify, you know, the savings if a physician or if a care team member, you know, can avoid a prior authorization especially if there's an alternative that doesn't require a PA. You know, there's some operational and some administrative savings time-wise, you know, that that is going to, you know, directly tie to. Now, additionally, if you can avoid, you know, some of the phone calls, you know, from that abrasive experience, kind of hypothetical that I mentioned in the very beginning, there's some savings there because you can set better expectations with patients before they walk out of the office and prior to showing up to the pharmacy counter. So again, I think there's a number of, of win-wins that are gonna be demonstrated across a number of constituents that have access and are using Project My Script in a meaningful way. Um, our network on the bottom, when you think about performance, continues to grow. Um, again, on, on June 26th, and you know, we have a number of EMR partners that are going to be going live, actually about 100, just over 100,000 prescribers as well. So, you know, this number will need to be updated, and candidly, we could probably update it every single month. But, you know, we are blessed that this tool continues to expand in the network, that our care team continue to use this to ultimately drive, you know, some meaningful behavior in the network and, and very much look forward to, you know, continuing to share those results um, with you and with the marketplace in, in an effort to to continue to achieve and, and drive the, the quadruple aim across the, the landscape. Appreciate your time. Hope you have a wonderful day and look forward to connecting to you soon. Thank you.